Hello guys and welcome to this video on my personal preferences when it comes to Restoration Druid talents uh, with regards to Mythic Keystone runs. Now the first thing you have to bear in mind is that everyone has their own particular playstyle, everyone has their own preferences um, and also you have to bear in mind the, the makeup of the team itself. For instance you might have a really an amazing tank but slightly weak DPS uh, when it comes to their DPS or whether it comes to their gear and therefore uh, they might have a lower health pool so you have to bear those things in mind uh, conversely you might have a really strong DPS and a fairly weak tank so you know depending on those factors together with your particular playstyle the way you like to play uh, whether you like to take preemptive measures such as using Scenarian Ward over, you know, uh, something else like Prosperity, then that's totally up to you. But this is my own particular view, uh, my own particular preference. And hopefully it would help, you know, encourage you to try and find the the talents and abilities that uh, suit your playstyle. So the first rank at uh, level 15 that you get is Prosperity, uh, Scenarian Ward and Abundance. Now Prosperity is my personal favourite and that's simply because it has two charges of Swift Mend and it couples with the, the relics that I have in my uh, legendary weapon which increases the healing of Swift Mend by 40% and Prosperity allows you to have three, oh, sorry, two charges, I wish, three charges, uh, two charges and it reduces the cooldown from 30 seconds to 27. Scenarian Ward protects a friendly target against damage and will consume the ward and heal the target for 880% spell power over 8 seconds. Now that's amazing for tank healing. And I did used to have Scenarian Ward but I, I realised that, um, you know, when it comes to Mythic Keystone runs or the higher levels, that it's not actually the tank that I need to be worrying about, it's the DPS and the DPS and their ability to be able to move out of, you know, hazards and things like that. I mean, if the DPS are doing their job, then a Scenarian Ward is absolutely, you know, it's perfectly fine to have on the tank just in case. Uh, they take sudden spike damage or, you know, they uh, don't pop their own personal cooldown in time. And I have used Scenarian Ward with DPS, but the, as again, the problem is, you don't really know when the DPS are going to incur uh, damage. And so, you know, you might find a lot of the time that you've cast it on the wrong person, or, you know, it's not actually needed, because it's actually the DPS, I found, anyway, that um, have the health issues. And, uh, yeah, so I, I don't tend to go for Scenarian Ward anymore. Next, we have Abundance, which decreases the cast time of your healing touch depending on the number of rejuvenations you have active which is amazing uh, that's really really good coupled with germination it's a great uh, talent to have uh, reduces the cooldown massively and you have to remember that healing touch is a very very efficient spell it's not as powerful as it used to be and the cast time is very very slow without this but if, say, you had rejuvenations in every single player within the dungeon, then the cast time of healing touch will be next to nothing. It'll be faster than regrowth, and it's, of course, a lot cheaper to, to cast than regrowth. So it's either abundance or prosperity. I tend to go for prosperity because of my relic and also because of the, you know, the instant cast. You know, if someone takes massive spike damage, then you can use that straight away, which is amazing. With abundance, you might be caught off guard you might not have enough active rejuvenations up suddenly you know when, when damage uh, suddenly comes in but yeah either two is uh, pretty good now below that we have renewal which instantly heals you for 30% of your maximum health uh, next we have displacer beast which teleports you up to 20 yards now on 7.1.5 it's been slightly nerfed but it's still an amazing talent and lastly we have wild charge which depending on your form has different abilities. Now I tend to go for Displacer Beast simply because of the fact that it allows me to keep up with the tank. Now there are tanks out there who just go, in well, fact the majority of tanks actually, unless they're starting out, most tanks actually just go and plow through, grab one group of enemies and then move on to the next, allowing the DPS to DPS them down. And of course if uh, you don't have Displacer Beast then you're going to find it very very difficult to try and keep up with the tank especially if they're a demon hunter and this is actually a lifesaver uh, sometimes because the tank can underestimate the uh, the, the packs uh, ahead of them 
and they can take massive uh, damage and you know displacer beast will allow you to actually get up there right away renewal yeah that's a great uh, ability to have to be able to heal yourself for 30 percent of your maximum health and it's free of charge as well and that coupled with guardian affinity which is in the next tier down is a great ability for uh, to keep yourself up uh, and i would imagine together with uh, pride as the, the legendary neck which i do have by the way that will almost guarantee your own survival which is imperative for the group's progress so yeah i choose displace the beast for that reason so underneath that we have balance affinity which increases the range of your abilities by five yards feral affinity which improves it which improves your movement speed and guardian affinity affinities so i can't speak today uh, which uh, reduces all damage taken by six percent now when it comes to mythic keystone runs i tend to always go with guardian affinity due to the simple fact that we take a huge amount of damage and act acts as a, another layer of defense for myself when it comes to raids however i do sometimes switch to balance affinity to increase the range of my abilities but in mythic keystone runs it's in my view better to have a uh, damage reduction thanks to guardian affinity below that we have mighty bash which stuns the target for five seconds mass entanglement which spreads to nearby enemies and uh, roots them in place and typhoon which is the one that I tend to go for. And people say, why Why do you choose Typhoon? Because Typhoon is an amazing way for me to actually help place certain enemies where we want them. A perfect example is in the Halls of Valor. Um, after you've entered the halls and you turn left, right at the end, there's a caster at the very top. And sometimes the tank will struggle to actually get up there in time. Unless, of course, they're a demon hunter. But with uh, Typhoon, I'm able to quickly go ahead and just typhoon them down to join the rest of the mobs. Similarly, uh, there are many, many instances in which the tank is uh, tanking a group of mobs and there's one caster just outside who's casting away and, you know, nothing's being done about it. So what I do is, is once again, I go ahead and I typhoon them so that they actually get blown towards the rest of the group so that they can be cleaved down and so on, AOE down. So Typhoon is definitely, definitely the best in my view. So below that we have Soul of the Forest, uh, which uh, when you cast Swift Men, you increase the healing of your next re regrowth and rejuvenation by 200%, and also Wild Growth by 75%. Then we have Incarnation Tree of Life, which in my view is not as good as it used to be. Um, there's only one instance in which I, I, I actually used that, and that was with Ursa. And uh, that was to help out with the tank heals. And lastly, on that same level, we have Cultivation, which uh, rejuvenation, uh, when rejuvenation heals the target below 60%, it applies Cultivation to the target, healing them for 144% spell power over 6 seconds. Now, I did tend to go for Soul of the Forest, uh, because that, coupled with Prosperity, allows you to have a really powerful quick heal. Uh, in case of, a, of an emergency, which you do tend to come across in Mythic Keystone runs. But now I've tended to go with Cultivation, because Cultivation provides an added layer of protection against any incoming damage, um, especially given that I, or I use Germination anyway, which allows me to apply two Rejuvenations at once. So to have two Rejuvenations at the same time, uh, Cultivation is just a backup, just in case they do fall below 60%. And I did notice that uh, when I went with Soul of the Forest and not Cultivation, if I had two Rejuvenations up on uh, a, a target, or the, you know they're below 60%, you're in a rut because you have to decide whether or not to allow the two Rejuvenations to tick, or if you don't, then they might incur even more damage and they might die. But with Cultivation there, it adds another healing aspect, which helps you out a great deal. So I tend to go with Cultivation nowadays. So below that, at level 90, we have Spring Blossoms, which each target healed by Efflorescence is healed by an additional 60% of spell power over 6 seconds. Then we have Inner Peace, which reduces the cooldown of Tranquility by 60 seconds. And then Germination, which, as I said before, applies two Rejuvenations to the same target. Now, I know a lot of players do use Spring Blossoms, 
uh, because it's really really useful but the thing with uh, mythic keystone runs is that there's a lot of movement there's a lot of crap on the floor and players have to move out of the way and you'll find that you're not really getting the benefits of spring blossoms because everyone's moving out of the way you know they're moving out of your efflorescence ring so I, I tend to go for germination germination is absolutely amazing and because I'm a troll I can increase my haste as well so you know if need be if I have double rejuvenation then uh, that will increase the number of ticks uh, coupled with the fact that it's affected by the mastery as well and it's just absolutely great to have and it's really really quick to cast it's not too expensive and um, yeah I think germination is invaluable when it comes to mythic keystone runs and lastly we have moment of clarity which affects the next three regrowths and increases their healing by 15%. The added extra healing was added in patch 7.1.5. And then we have Stone Bark, which reduces the cooldown of Iron Bark by 30 seconds and it increases the healing from a heal over time effect by 20%. And then lastly, we have Flourish, which extends all of your heal over time effects on friendly targets within 60 yards by 6 seconds. I tend to always go with Flourish. I do know a lot of healers who go with stone bark, obviously depending on the situation. If you have a weak tank, you might want to use stone bark, which is great. But the thing with stone bark is that it's, it only really affects one target. Whereas with mythic keystones, as I said before, it tends not to be the tank so much, it tends to be the DPS and their inability to be able to move out of danger. And, um, you know, they can, I mean, through no fault of their own sometimes, they can take a huge amount of damage and so stone bark is absolutely useless for that but flourish on the other hand will actually help you especially if you've cast swift mend uh, with prosperity coupled with soul of the forest which increases the spell power of wild growth by 75 percent and then you can couple flourish with your uh your uh, legendary weapon ability which increase uh, increases the uh the the power sorry your uh, your spells even further uh, it's absolutely you know invaluable in my in my view so that's it just to go through that I usually go for prosperity uh, displacer beast guardian affinity typhoon cultivation germination and flourish with the cultivation, you can change it out with Soul of the Forest if you want to. And with Prosperity, you can change it out for uh, Abundance. And so that's basically it. Those are the talents that I prefer to use at the minute. Um, if you have any different views, then feel free to comment on the video. That's it from me. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.